Well, it's time to change the batteries in my main UPS of my server rack. So, let me shut my server down here. System is going offline. Continue. Now, let's take a walk. Wait for this thing to shut down. Alright, she's out. This system's already in standby. Okay. We have no load. You notice how bad the battery gauge is. So let's shut her down. Aha. Let me pull this thing out of here. Okay, I got the UPS on my bench now. The noise you hear in the background is my old beat up Lakewood fan that I used for my workshop here. Another trash find. If anybody's got a front grill for one of those, I'd be, uh, be delighted to restore that. But anyway, this is an older UPS. It's a Smart UPS 1250. I got about six of these out of the trash a few years ago and, and rebuilt several of them and put them to use. Uh, one thing I noticed already is the whole UPS is warm where the batteries are, so these batteries are in pretty bad shape, probably about five years old. But uh, this one does not have the easily, you know, field replaceable battery pack. You actually have to take the, take the unit apart. There's four screws in the back. You actually have to take all four of them out to be able to lift the cover off uh, like that. So I'm going to take that the rest of the way off and we'll have a look inside. Okay, when you disassemble a Smart UPS 1250 or a similar unit like this, you can lay the uh, top half of it on its side right there next to it and the battery wires are just the right length. Now these batteries are noticeably warm. They've probably been bad for quite a while. In fact, uh, they're warmer here than they are here, so there's, there's probably a couple shorted cells in there. And this has the very old style fuse between the two battery packs. I'm going to be replacing that with the, the newer style fuse. And that actually goes in like this. And I will uh, start taking these batteries out. And these are the new ones that are going to be going in. These, I think, are made right here in the USA, uh, right in Texas, actually. I got a set of these in my other UPS, and they're still going strong. So, I'll be putting these in. Let me get these out first. Holy crap, this battery's like split. And it's hot, too. I can't believe that. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. Okay, I've got the new battery pack installed and connected. A couple of tips on that, also uh, recommended by the manufacturer even. If the batteries, when you get them, are not pre-attached as one unit uh, together, you can use a piece of clear packing tape Oh, just my radon detector. I know it's not very healthy down here. 4.8 picocuries per liter. But anyway, attach the batteries together with packing tape. That way when you move them as a unit, it doesn't stress the connections on the fuse and stuff. Also, insulate the connections with a couple layers of tape after you're done. Now, it's best uh, also for safety reasons to connect the UPS wires first since those are your, your, your actual positive and negative on the pack and you don't want to short them out. If you put the fuse on first and then do these and you accidentally short these two with your tools while you're tightening the bolts, it's going to be bad. So put these on first and then attach the fuse because these two terminals are shorted together by the fuse anyways. There's no danger there if you, hit, if you touch them both with your wrench or whatever. And it will spark a little bit when you first attach the fuse. That's normal. So. Also, write the date on the battery pack when you replaced it, so next time you open it up, you know exactly how long your old batteries lasted. You can say, oh, these only lasted me two years, or 
well, I got five years out of these. I want to get the same type of batteries again, get the same brand, whatever. So now that these are all connected, I'm going to put the cover back on and I'll show you how to calibrate the batteries. Okay, now that the covers are installed, I'm ready to go ahead with the calibration. Now, an important step. When you're calibrating these, you have to keep the earth ground connected. So use a power strip that has a switch on it. Make sure the ground is good by using a plug tester. And also, on the back of the UPS, there's a small light that says Site Wiring Fault. That will light up if the ground is bad. So just make sure that your earth ground is good, and then you can go ahead with this. The power strip is turned on, so now we'll turn on the UPS. Let it go through its self-test. And the batteries are going to be a little low from being on the shelf. You have to let them charge up until the fan shuts off in the unit and the gauge is full. And I'll show you the next step. Okay, now the batteries are fully charged. The gauge is reading all the way up and the cooling fan's not running. That means the unit's sitting idle and you can start your calibration. What you need to calibrate the batteries on these accurately is something that will put a purely resistive load that does not change and it has to be approximately 50% of the capacity that the UPS has. Since this UPS can put out 900 watts or 1250 volt amps, uh, I'm going to use a 500 watt halogen work light. That's approximately 50 or 60 percent load capacity on this. What that does is it gives the CPU and the UPS a perfectly stable reference right at the midpoint of the load and it, it uh, after the batteries are drained and recharged it knows exactly how long the batteries will last at a given load. If you were to use something like a computer uh, to calibrate the UPS, the load would vary too much while you're using it and that wouldn't give an accurate reference point for the CPU. So your battery gauge wouldn't be accurate. But anyway, now that you've, like I said, make sure your ground is good, use a power strip for this. And uh, we're going to turn on the light. Now you can see the battery gauge is exactly halfway up, that's what you want and you want it to stay that way the whole time so make sure you don't turn the light off I've even had a light, you know, one of these lights burn out while I was doing this and it screwed up my calibration because I, I couldn't start over, you know but anyway now that you've got your load you can go ahead and cut the power now this is the annoying part you need to let the unit run on battery power until it goes completely dead and shuts off on its own. At that point you can remove the load, turn the UPS back on, let it fully charge, and then it's ready for use. And the battery gauge will be totally accurate at that time too. So I don't know how long this is going to take, probably about 45 minutes. But once it shuts off, I'm going to put it back in my server rack and turn it back on. Just for reference, it is 1.50 a.m. Let's see how long this will run in these batteries. Boy, this is going to be a long wait with that beeping. Okay, it's 2.11 a.m. and the unit just died. So, it ran for a little bit less than what I thought it would. It was about, what, 22 minutes? But uh, it's possible that I didn't let it char uh, trickle charge enough. I forgot that the, the fan only runs during the high current charge. I probably should have left it plugged in and uh, trickle charging for a while before I did this. But anyway, it'll probably still be pretty well calibrated. You can see that it's just signaling low battery there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn the power back on. And uh, disconnect the load, let it charge back up. Another thing I almost forgot to mention was when you're replacing the battery packs in these, it's easier to find the replacements if you know the APC part number. In this case, uh, for this unit, it's an RBC7. Um, all of APC's battery packs usually start with RBC and then a number. So 
This one in particular is RBC7. So I'm going to let this charge up now. Alright, I've let it charge up overnight and uh, got it reinstalled in the rack and I'm ready for the power up test. Everything's up and running now. Thanks for watching, guys.